Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri. Today we will together explore Signal R with ASP.NET Core 3.1 and the date is February 17, 2020. Now you might ask, what is Signal R? Well, ASP.NET Signal R is a library to add real-time web functionality to applications. It essentially allows your server-side C# -sharp code to invoke client-side JavaScript functions and vice versa. Signal R uses WebSockets under the covers when it's available and gracefully falls back to other techniques and technologies when it is not, while the application code remains the same. Signal R also provides a simple high-level API for doing server-to-client remote procedure calls in an ASP.NET application. Here's a preview of what we're going to be developing together. I have two browsers. On the left-hand side, I've got a Chrome browser and on the right hand side an Opera browser and over here I can do some sketching on the left hand side and as you can see any sketches that I do on the left hand side magically appears on the right hand side and I can go to the right hand side and do some other sketching and it also appears on the left hand side. So whichever browser you work on it immediately updates all the other browsers. So this is what we are going to build together. Let's get started. Let's first create a directory for our application. So I'm going to make a directory, mkdir, and the name of my app will be called Signal R Sketchpad. And I will go into that directory and start a new web application here. So I'll go .NET, new, web app minus minus no https and that creates for me a web app now let me just check what version of dotnet core i have so if i go dotnet minus minus list sdks i've got 2.2 3.0 and 3.1 now the default is 3.1, so the app that I'm creating will be using 3.1. We need a library called libman. And if you don't have that library already, you need to install it. You might ask, what is libman used for? Well, libman is used for downloading libraries that are client-side libraries, like jQuery, Bootstrap. For this application, we need to download a library called signalr.js from a content delivery network and we will be using that libman utility. To install the libman utility if you don't already have it, you need to run this command. .NET tool install minus g microsoft.web.librarymanager.cli If I hit enter, it's going to tell me you already have it. So I don't need to install it. But once you do install it, you can use libman to download the signal r library. This will be the command libman install and the library we need is ASP.NET Signal R. And we're going to be using a content delivery network called unpkg. The libraries will be placed in the www root lib signal R folder. And the minus minus file switch that you can see here it is dictating what files we want. We want signal R.js and signal R min.js. These are the two files we need. So let me hit enter. There it is, it has installed it. Let's open up our application in VS Code. So let's type code dot and it should open our app in VS Code. Let's have a look at the WW root lib folder and you will see here there is a signal R folder and sure enough the two files that we requested are right here. Signal R and signal R min.js. In order to build a signal R application, we need to create a hub. And a hub represents the class that will be communicating to the client JavaScript code and the JavaScript code can invoke methods on the hub. Let's create a new folder here, which we will call hubs. In the hubs folder, I will create my hub and I'll call it draw.hub because all this hub does is it draws dots on the client. So I'll go new class draw dot hub. Now I will replace it with my code as follows. 
you will see that this class draw.hub it inherits from the hub class and it's the hub class that gives it all this functionality let's resolve our namespaces here for hub and for task you can see now there are two methods here the update canvas and it takes two arguments x and y these two arguments represent the coordinates of the dot when this method is called all it does is it calls a function on the client side javascript code called update dot and it notifies all the clients that are connected to the application also there's another method called clear canvas when this is called all the clients will have their clear canvas function in javascript invoke there's some additional configuration that we need to do in the startup.cs file the first thing we need to do is go into the configure services method and add this line of code which basically says that this app is going to be using SignalR and the other code that we need to add is an endpoint and the endpoint goes into this app dot use endpoints and I shall add an additional endpoint here and let's just resolve this class so this is declaring a new endpoint that's based on this hub and the endpoint is going to be draw dot hub we're done with the configuration that needs to be done on the server side the next step is to create our client code let's go into pages index.cshtml and let us delete all the code here since we do not need this file I'm going to delete it so you can come here and delete this So back in index.cshtml, I replace it with my code. And this code at the very top, all it has is styles for the various elements that we have. Now we have two important elements in our HTML. The first one is a button. And when this button is clicked, it calls a function in my JavaScript called tell server to clear. The other important element is a canvas. The canvas has an ID called sketchpad and a width and a height. This styling here simply styles my page and my elements. At the very bottom, there are two JavaScript files that are being loaded. The first one is the one that I downloaded using Libman. If you remember, we got signal R and signal R min.js. So I'll be just using signal r although in production you should be using signal r min.js and another file that's being loaded here is draw.js now we don't have a draw.js so let's go and create one and that would be created in the ww root js folder so i'll create a new file here call it draw.js and the code for draw.js is as follows the first important line is this line which establishes a connection to this endpoint draw.hub over here the connection.start method opens the connection if there's an error it's going to display an error right here let's look some more at what's going on here this update dot represents the function that's going to be invoked by the server let's go to the server and see what we've got here the server invokes two functions update dot and clear canvas these functions are here update dot and clear canvas when update dot is invoked by the server it simply calls draw dot which is a local function here and this does some drawing of dots also when the clear canvas function is invoked by the server this clears the canvas now let's look deeper at the rest of the code at the bottom here this code gets called as soon as the page is loaded because it doesn't belong to a function here we get a handle to the sketchpad canvas and with this canvas object we get a 2d context to the canvas if the canvas is not null we add a bunch of listeners to the canvas and these listeners are the mouse down listener 
the mouse move listener and the mouse up listener. When the mouse down or mouse move events happen, these functions sketchpad mouse down and mouse move are called respectively. When the mouse up event happens, the sketchpad mouse up function is called locally. So let's look at sketchpad mouse down and sketchpad mouse move. So sketchpad mouse move, it does a call to the server. It invokes a function called update canvas on the server. Let's go to the server and have a look here. Update canvas is this method. Also, the sketchpad mouse down function makes a call to the server update canvas method. Let's look at what happens when this function is called in our HTML tell server to clear. This must be a function here. So let's look for it. This is it, tell server to clear. When this function is called, a method on the server is invoked called clear canvas. And clear canvas is over here. Clear canvas invokes a function on the client side called clear canvas. And that function we saw it earlier on, which simply clears the canvas. So we're pretty much done with our app. All that needs to happen now is that we should start it and see what it does. So I'm going to go .NET run here to start my application. And let's open up a browser on the left hand side, which is Chrome and another browser on the right hand side, which is Opera. And let's go to our local host. 5000 and we can see our canvas. Copy this and come over to the right hand side and paste the same URL and I see my canvas again. Let me draw a house. So I start drawing the roof on the left hand side and on the right hand side I draw the rest of the house and over on the left hand side I can draw maybe a window here and a door and on the other side, I can draw another window. You see that this application works perfectly well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can do much more sophisticated applications using Signal R and I hope to see you in a video in the not too distant future.